Okay, I'm saying to myself, why you want them niggas at the wedding? Okay, because you can't even enjoy your wedding. Because I'm sure some of them are crackheads, okay? Or, you know, cokeheads or whatever it is. I'm sure some of them are. And that means you got to be getting married to your wife and watching your pussy. love bugs hello bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the youtube and if you are not already a part of our bella book club please remember to hit the patreon link Below and for a small $5 minimum monthly fee, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. And I know you can tell that this is a whole different picture. It's because my MacBook battery burnt out after one year. The battery burnt out. I swear to God, I don't understand how one of the most expensive computers in the world has so many goddamn problems. I don't get it. But nonetheless... Let's talk about Bobby the Browns, Every Little Step, Part 17. No, 18. So where we left off, Bobby the Brown walked in on Whitney D. Houston eating potted donuts on their wedding day. You know, Bobby the Brown is astounded. What the hell? My woman is eating potted donuts, but he's not too shook at about it because her brothers, uh, which one was, is it Mike and one of, well, two of her brothers or one of her brothers had already told Bobby the Brown that Whitney Houston partakes. In fact, the brother had said that he was the one who introduced Whitney Houston to potted donuts. Okay. And Whitney Houston, you know, why she in the act, she looked up at him, says, I'm so nervous. Do you want some? Bobby the Brown said, hell no. Okay, Whitney said, suit yourself, okay? Now, the thing about it was Bobby Brown was not turned off by it, you know? He looked at his wife like, or his soon-to-be wife like, oh, she is bad ass. She gets down with the best of them. So he is excited even more because he is a bad boy with a bad girl, and he loves it, okay? Now, we get to the part where the wedding is going on, okay? He is looking at his beautiful wife walk down the aisle and he is saying to himself, I'm a bad motherfucker. I done bagged Whitney, the voice Houston. Yeah, I'm a bad boy now, but being married to Whitney Houston is gonna make me even better. Nobody can touch me. At least that's what he thought. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I looked at Bobby the Brown sideways because it, it, when I read the book, it kind of gave off the feeling of, are you an opportunist, Bobby the Brown? Now, I'm not saying that he didn't love her because what he did say was that their sex was off the hook. You know, with ninjas, you know, you get with a woman, as long as you is pee whipped, they ain't leaving you, okay? I don't care if you're stealing all their money and crashed up all their cars, smack their mother in the face, kick their father in the knees. If, that, if they is pee whipped, they ain't going nowhere. So remember when I told you a couple of videos back, you know, I talked to you about how Bobby Brown and Whitney, the voice Houston met. They was at the Soul Train Awards back when people actually respected the Soul Train Awards. I've never stopped respecting the Soul Train Awards, but a lot of these A-list celebrities kind of threw the Soul Train Awards in the trash or, you know, oh, they not good enough. It ain't a Grammy. I don't want it. You know, some, you know, I don't, I don't know how these, especially black celebrities got so bougie. Now it's starting to turn. I think Erica Badu helped it out a bit, you know, now. I, I, I'm just going to leave that there. So anyway, Bobby the Brown and Whitney Houston are at the Soul Train Awards. Bobby Brown sitting in his row and behind him are the whinings. Whitney Houston came up 
to in the aisle where the wine was and was talking to him. Now she was leaning her butt basically on Bobby the Brown's head. Okay. And Bobby the Brown hit her with the <sighs> Now why I brung this up was because at the wedding, Marvin Winan presided. Okay. He said it was a beautiful, extravagant affair. Did he say it was like 800 people at the wedding? Oh, it was a, a crazy number. Okay. I'm like 800 people. What the fuck? You don't know that many people, but he said it was celebrities everywhere. Okay. Now what was significant about this wedding was that they let they released like, um, I don't know how many doves into the air. It was a beautiful sight. But three doves decided that they want to stay there. And they stayed there. Okay. He felt like something ain't right about these three doves. But they stayed on the property until he came outside one day strolling around. And one of them doves was mauled to death. He said, I should take this as an omen. I don't know about that, but, you know. That's kind of, you know, scary to me. I mean, the does was released to the world. Three of them stayed and one of them got fucked up. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that little piece of information because that was maybe a sign. Okay. That Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston's marriage was going to be doomed. Y'all, so this is where Eric Leola interjects. Now, I know you can hear that vacuum noise out there i don't know why this office building next to us always has like this big vacuum cleaner sound my apologies but i'm going to try to talk loud enough so that you guys cannot be irritated by that sound the way that i am okay but this is where leola interjects okay and she expresses her concern about whitney and bobby's relationship she first talked about the marriage she said it was beautiful Bobby even went back to Orchard Park and damn near invited the whole entire Orchard Park to the wedding. Okay, I'm saying to myself, why you want them niggas at the wedding? Okay, because you can't even enjoy your wedding because I'm sure some of them are crackheads. Okay, or, you know, cokeheads or whatever it is. I'm sure some of them are. And that means you got to be getting married to your wife and watching your plus. Uh uh, that's too much stress on me, you know, but anyway. She said it was guests from Orchard Park. You're going to bring them guests from Orchard Park with all these different celebrity names. So let's go into the celebrity names. She said that it was Gladys Knight, Patti LaBelle, Donald Trump. What the fuck is Donald Trump doing at Bobby the Brown's wedding? Oh, no, Jesus. Okay. Uh, Dickity Clark D, Ashford and Simpson, L.A. and Babyface, and who is that? Isaiah Thomas. Child, he, she said anyway, this she goes on. that it was a beautiful wedding. Okay, she spoke on how well uh, Marvin Winan did, Winans did presiding over the wedding. Right. She also talked about how she was close to Whitney. Okay, she said that her and Whitney were almost the same age. I think she said Whitney was a year or two older than her. You know, so being as though they the same age, Leola went straight to Whitney and was like, uh, "What you want with my brother?" OK, now I'm saying to myself, what the hell you act like your brother is like, I mean, not that Bobby Brown isn't, but I'm like, that's Whitney Houston. How the hell you just want to walk up to Whitney Houston and be like, what you want, my brother? Girl, you try to Leola. You know, that's just like some of these women who be like real, real protective over their son, like the woman want to hurt their son. And I'm like saying to myself, girl, your son ain't shit. He ain't had a job since 1972. You need to be happy that this bitch want to take your uh, bum ass son off your hands. But anyway, I digress. The conversation between Whitney and Leola went something like, you know, Whitney, why do you want my brother? Whitney said, because Bobby Bobby allows me to be myself. I don't have to be fake. I don't have to be pretend. I don't have to pretend to be something that I'm not. I get to just be me. And let me tell you, that is the most important thing in a relationship. When you got to pretend to be somebody else. No, that that is stressful to me. Let me wake up and be a you know a nigga every day. Okay. But she said Bobby allowed her to be her. Also, when it comes down to Leola, I said that her and Whitney became friends. Okay. 
which in turn led them or led Leola to be Whitney's personal assistant for a long time. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Leola the one, the Bobby Brown sister who she was doing drug with? Okay. Okay. I was just, I was just trying to be sure. I'm sure it wasn't that Leola. Wasn't that the Leola that was doing drugs with Whitney to Houston? Okay. I was just checking. Now let's move back to Bobby. Okay. Bobby said that it was a beautiful wedding. Now let's move on to the honeymoon. At the honeymoon, uh, Bobby the Brown was imitating his hilarious father. He slammed his hand down on the table and a fork had popped up and hit Whitney Houston in the eye. They was out of the country, child. Okay. Now her face bleeding, so they got to go to the hospital. Okay. Now the people's is looking at her thinking, is he is 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 Bobby the Brown beating you, girl? Because remember, the still stigma out there in the universe is that Bobby the Brown then knocked up Whitney Houston and now he is taking advantage of our American princess. Okay. So the doctors is looking at Bobby the Brown like, is he beating you, Whitney? Is that what he's doing? If he's doing it, blink twice, baby. Just blink twice. So he said that even the police who came around to check it out wanted to beat his ass because you cannot beat or hurt Whitney to Houston. So moving on, her face is bleeding. They stitched her up. They didn't do it right, you know, because they crossed the country. Then I, I'm kind of thinking to myself now, maybe I don't want that free insurance that they give because, you know, everybody in other countries get free insurance. I'm saying I, maybe I don't want that because if that free insurance is fucked up or the, the procedures that they give you when you got that free insurance is fucked up, I don't want it. But any rate, they stitched her up wrong. So she had to see a plastic surgeon when she got back to America. Now, let me add one more thing. When it comes down to Bobby the Brown and his uh, outlook on Robin, he knew, he admitted that Whitney Houston was her happiest when she was with Robin, okay? And he believed that if Robin wasn't pushed away, Whitney Houston would still be alive, okay? Listen, Bobby Brown got a lot of demons, okay, that he has to contend with, all right? And him separating Robin Crawford and Whitney Houston is a big one, okay? Because I do myself believe that if Robin was still in her life, she would still be here. If you agree with me, please say it below. I just, I, <sighs> I'm gonna leave that there because I can't. Now, when Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston got back to America or got back home from their honeymoon, Bobby and Robin got into an intense argument. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Um, I thought that Bobby Brown was a bitch-ass motherfucker for arguing with a woman. Any Negro that argues with a woman and get in her face like he going to punch her in the mouth is old bitch-ass motherfucker. And the reason why I say that is because I seen the Whitney Houston documentary. They showed times where Bobby and Robin was getting into it and he was overly aggressive with that woman. Okay. But for some reason it was cool at first and then it wasn't. And I don't know if it was Bobby the Brown's insecurities because he felt like Whitney and Robin was hunching. I don't know. Um, do I have in the back of my mind that they used to play around together? Yeah, I do. I do. I think that they used to play around together because I see that Bobby the Brown kind of, um, he kind of grazes over bad behavior, behavior from himself and other people. Okay. So, I think he does protect the innocent and the guilty a lot in this book, okay? Because like he said, he said that him and Whitney or that Whitney and Robin didn't have sexual relationships when they was together, okay? Bobby Brown came in the relationship very insecure, okay? I don't know why, but he was insecure when it came down to Kevin Bag and Bitch Costner. He was insecure when it came down to Robin Crawford. I don't understand how on one hand you could say y'all wasn't or they wasn't hunting each other when you was around, but then you have so much animosity towards the girl. 
I don't get that if they're just friends. But anyway, they got into the heated argument. Okay, Robin looked at Whitney and said, you gonna let him do that? She's sitting there, Robin, yes. Because that's my husband now. You know, I know Robin was heartbroken. Now, moving on to Bobby and Whitney singing together. Yes, they got something in common. And let me tell you what it is. It's them goddamn cigarettes, them Newports, because Whitney and Bobby were in the studio with Teddy Riley. They were working on a song, okay? They kept leaving out the door to smoke on them damn Newports. Teddy Riley is frustrated because he is like, what, 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 what? We got to make music. You motherfuckers out there, y'all keep smoking cigarettes. Y'all too made for each other. Y'all really do have a lot in common. Hence, we got something in common. And what Whitney Houston or what Bobby the Brown said was that it was very intimidating to sing next to Whitney Houston. Dig this. For all you motherfuckers that be like, Bobby could sing. Remember y'all was cussing me out saying that Bobby Brown could sing? Listen, Bobby himself knew that he wasn't the greatest singer. It's okay if he's not an excellent singer. There's so many different celebrities out there that are not great singers, but they're excellent performers, okay? He knows this. So what he said was when he was creating the song, we've got something in common with his wife. His wife gave him pointers. When she seen him struggling, he she showed him how to bend his voice so that it could sound good with her voice so they can mesh together. I think they did very good. He ain't got no damn uh, Barry White voice or, you know, a great falsetto you know, a falsetto, whatever that is, but he does good for Bobby Brown. And we got something in common, worked very well for them. Okay, you're welcome for that piece of information for all you people that wanted to throw a rock in my head because I said Bobby the Brown couldn't sing. Bobby the Brown said he can't sing. Why the hell you mad at me? Cause I just repeated what the fuck he said. Now, a month after the wedding, MCA contacted Bobby the Brown and said, nigga, we need more music. Okay. Which he created, uh, what was it called? I think it was just called Being Bobby or Bobby Brown. Y'all know, y'all tell me, but it had the song humping around on it. Okay. Now, ironically, uh, Bobby Brown wasn't humping around. He wasn't. He said because Whitney allowed him to, you know, act a whole ninja out there before his wedding, he ain't had an urge to hunt other women. Plus, him and Whitney were sexual magnets. Okay, now getting back to his second album with MCA or his next album with MCA. Okay, it didn't do as well as Don't Be Cruel, but it did well enough. Okay, it wasn't the smash bash, but it was good. Okay, and soon after that, Miss Whitney Houston became pregnant with Bobby Christie. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves you, babies. Have a good one. Peace. We got something in common.